So you may have just actually bought the M2 MacBook Air and you may be trying to figure out how you actually use this specific MacBook. Now this is going to be a complete beginner's guide, essentially everything from point A to point B. It's not going to be anything super technical, but if you've used a MacBook before, this is probably not the video for you. This is if you're completely new to kind of Mac OS and MacBooks in general. I'll go and give you a quick breakdown of this specific device. Now first of all, I'll definitely tell you this is one of the best MacBooks you could buy. It's very good. The M2 chipset inside of this thing is going to last for a very long amount of time and definitely when you look at the outside it's a little bit different than other MacBook Airs. On the front you now have this completely flat slab of glass versus before it was curved. You have the Apple logo right here. It does not glow. It's pretty much just a sticker. It's not a sticker. It's just like a logo but it feels very good. The whole entire top MacBook feels very good as well but I will say because of the thinness factor I'd be careful of putting too much pressure on it. I don't know how bendable these things are so just keep that in mind and that really covers it up on the top portion. On the side portion right here there really isn't anything else it's exactly the same thing as you'd expect before and it's kind of exactly the same thing as you'd expect on other macbooks it's just the hinge on this specific portion of the macbook we don't have anything except a headphone jack that is right here nothing else on this side of the macbook this portion of the MacBook is how we go ahead and open it up and get into the hinge portion. And this specific portion of our MacBook actually has the two USB Type-C ports and the MagSafe charger. So what we can do is we can go ahead and actually plug in either a monitor, we can plug in hard drives, storage, all these other things within these specific ports right here. They both do the exact same thing and they both are actually Thunderbolt 4. So if you have any other accessories that are Thunderbolt 4, you know, supportive these two ports support it which is really really cool you also have the magsafe charger here as well so this magsafe charger allows you to go ahead and actually go ahead and charge this macbook up so instead of using these two ports here you can charge your macbook via this port and still have a really good macbook as well now on the bottom of these specific macbooks we do have our little lid tips right here whatever they call them the like feet so essentially over time these things will go ahead and degrade you can replace them as far as i know and you can go ahead and you know unlock the bottom of your macbook air by going through and actually unscrewing it there's four screws on the back so I would never really recommend doing anything like that if you're a beginner but if you want to send it into Apple these are the screws are going to go ahead and replace you can replace these like I said I'd recommend cleaning out the bottom every once in a while but pretty much that kind of covers it up on the outside of this specific MacBook now we can go ahead and open it up by grabbing the to lip tip thing right here and flipping it open just like so now on the bottom portion of our MacBook Air, we do actually have our keyboard set. So right here, here are all of our keys. There is no touch bar on this specific MacBook. We also have a trackpad here as well. Now this trackpad allows you to go ahead and use the mouse. I think most of you probably already use this by now, but I will say this is a vibration motor. This is not an actual, you know, button that's clicking in. So keep that in mind. If you're going through and you're actually trying to click it with like a pen or something like that, it's not going to click. There's no buttons on the bottom. This is just a complete, you can click it anywhere you want to. It's a vibration motor. Now with the keyboard itself, I'm sure you've used keyboards before. This is pretty much a full keyboard, has great travel. I would also recommend every once in a while getting a napkin and cleaning out the inside crevices of these specific MacBook keys. Sometimes over time, your MacBook Air and any MacBook and keyboard can get dust and stuff stuck in between. So I'd recommend cleaning out your keyboard as much as possible. Now in the top right corner we have something very interesting. We actually have a touch ID sensor. Now what this allows us to do is it actually allows us to unlock our MacBook by pretty much just putting our fingerprint sensor over it. Now if you've already set up your MacBook you might already have that capability. If you haven't set it up then obviously you won't have that capability. So keep that in mind and I'm assuming you already went through the complete setup of your MacBook. If you haven't already gone through your MacBook setup, then obviously I'd recommend doing it. There's a lot of personal information and I recommend going through it in that room. So here we have the ginormous 13.6 inch display of our M2 MacBook Air. Now starting off at the top, we have a little bit of bezel around it, but it's not as crazy. And we do have the notch. Now the notch is there pretty much for the front camera. There's no face safety or anything here, but it's still, it shouldn't really get in the way too much and you'll pretty much get used to it over time. Now within the display, this is our macOS home screen. I've already made a really big tutorial on how to use macOS, including Mac OS Ventura, I think, but regardless, at a high level, essentially this is your home screen. You you have the standard type of you know top portion, so you can go ahead and get into your Apple logo here, you can get into Finder, and all these other things on the left side of your specific machine. On the right side, now this is with macOS, the previous version, macOS Monterey. With macOS Ventura, we have a lot more capability that we can go and customize within our MacBook. On top of that, with your MacBook Air, the cursor goes behind the notch. So if you try to go ahead and get, you know, sometimes if you lose your cursor, the cursor may go behind the notch of this specific MacBook. So keep that in mind, if it's, you know, somewhere else you may be trying to look for here. Now on the right side we do have our battery toggle right there. We have our Wi-Fi connection we can connect to. We have the search button so we can do spotlight search. We can click on the control panel right here and get access and quick toggles. 
to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop, video effects, display, sound, all these other things, but you also have display and sound right on your function keys of your keyboard. So just like how I showed earlier, you have your vibration toggle so you can increase and decrease your brightness. You can get into your little thing right there. You can increase and decrease the sound as well by clicking up and clicking down right there. So you can always go ahead and use them right here, but having them as quick toggles on your display is actually really nice as well. And on the side right, you see your time and date and all these other things too. Now, getting used to macOS is its own problem and its own task. So with the MacBook Air itself, that kind of covers up the complete hardware. There really isn't anything that's suitable for the MacBook Air that you probably already couldn't do on previous MacBooks. Now on the bottom, you have your dock. So here you can go ahead and add you know, applications and all these other things. There's an application key. There's a way to get into all your applications by using the multi-touch like this on the trackpad. So if you go like this on the trackpad, you should be able to see all your applications. So you can always drag and drop apps from here. You can also remove applications by clicking on, you essentially double click, you essentially dual click. So you go like this, you can go like this right here, right click essentially, click options and remove these specific things from your dock. So you have that type of capability here too, which is really nice. You can click right here, click options and you can remove dock. Now, another massive thing I want to go ahead and get you to at least get used to on your Mac is actually configuring and updating your specific MacBook. So on your M2 MacBook Air, if you recently just purchased it, chances are there's probably already an update available for your MacBook. So what I would recommend doing is taking your cursor and clicking on the Apple logo that's on the top left corner. So click right there. And then what you want to do is click system or actually click about this Mac. So here we want to do click about this Mac and you will get into this little toggle. So what this is going to show you is it's going to go ahead and show you what your macOS version is, what your type of model MacBook is, you already know this, but right here you will see software update. So what I would recommend doing is clicking software update right there and you will get into this toggle. Now, if you already connected to Wi-Fi, which chances are you probably have, you wanna go ahead and actually connect to a better Wi-Fi connection so you can download a specific you know, software update and software version that your MacBook should be on. So like I said, if you just bought this MacBook and it's already been out for like a month or two, you wanna go and check if there's an update available because if there is, I would recommend updating your Mac and staying on the most consistent version of Mac OS as often as you can. Now clicking back, you can go ahead and see, we'll get straight into our system preferences. If we go and click X, you can still get into system preferences by clicking here and clicking system preference. So click on system preferences, we'll come right into this portion. And here, what you can do is sign into your Apple ID, which chances are, if you've already been through the setup, you've probably already gone through this specific portion. You can see we have a lot of settings here. Now, if I wanted to go through and explain each of these settings, it would take us 45 days to go through each individual one. But at a high level, what I would recommend doing is going through a majority of these. You don't have to go through each individual one. The ones I would recommend going through are general, possibly desktop and screensaver. You might wanna go through notifications and internet accounts to make sure your accounts and everything are set up. Security and privacy you may wanna go through. Software update you have here as well. You may wanna set up touch ID and also displays and potentially time machine if you know what time machine is. Those are the main ones I'd recommend going through. All these other ones you'll kind of always go through. You know, you'll always go through network, you'll always go through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and sounds and maybe trackpad and keyboard if you're going through other things. Trackpad is a big one though because if you're using the multi-touch you know, gestures on everything, this is another area I'd probably recommend looking at. But clicking back and clicking back once more or just exiting out, you should now at a high level pretty much understand how to use your MacBook Air and as well as for the most part how to use macOS at an extremely high level. Now like I mentioned, if you've used macOS before, even if you've never used macOS before, chances are you've probably used some sort of operating system, so you should know by now how to use macOS or Windows, you know, by now. So so at a high level, hopefully you understand how to use your M2 MacBook Air. Like I mentioned, this is a pretty brief tutorial. There's a, there's a lot of information on how to use your MacBook out there. And definitely at a high level, you should know how to use it. This is a great MacBook. It's going to last you for a long period of time. If you want to keep this thing even for 10 years, you could probably keep it for 10 years, to be honest, and probably still be able to use it for longer than that. It's going to have a huge feature ahead of it, lots of software updates, huge performance leaps on this MacBook as well. But that kind of covers up how exactly to use it. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.